Welcome to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast, where world-changing spiritual entrepreneurs come to deeply awaken the power within to bring forth their greatest purpose, to create massive awakened impact for millions of souls around the planet, while enjoying being in tune with all life and real wealth in all aspects of their lives. I'm your host, Daniel John Hanneman. And hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome again to another beautiful episode of Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. And uh, I'm so grateful to be with you today. Today, I'm talking about energy scanning. That's where I'm tuning in to the energies of the people listening in, a few light leaders. I'll be talking about psychic prophecy. Um, I have some psychic prophecies to share with you. I'll talk about psychic prophecy, that subject, and what prophecies I may have for you and light leaders and for the world. And then uh, channeling. So channeling, I'll do some, uh, I'll definitely integrate some channeling of some sort of another into today's episode to help you light leaders to rocket, to rocket to your next level of purpose and impact and money and all that kind of stuff so just into your next level all right so let's uh let's dive in so before we do i i'd like you to go ahead and consider subscribing uh go ahead and uh, click the subscribe button wherever you are give us a rating give us a review i love to hear your comments i appreciate you sharing this on your platforms and social media let the world know about what is being shared from you know myself and uh it's another perspective um and you know i i'm not one that's going to tell you uh, man everything i predict is absolutely going to be true but it there's definitely pieces of this that uh, you don't want to miss. So feel free to share with others if it's resonating. Okay, so let's um, let's dive in from there. Um, and uh, yeah, so anyway, energy scanning is something that I've been doing for quite a long time now. Again, just reading your energy uh, of the group. And um, so... So just to give you an idea what I'll be doing with that. So I will be tuning in to the frequency of this group. There may be a one specific message that you need to hear today, uh, even as far as that goes. So before I get into the scanning and then the tuning in to overall the psychic prophecy and the channeling, just want to you know set things up like I like to do often anyway, um, by sharing some, you know, uh, just some pieces to, to navigate where we are right here, right now, as of the time of the release of this podcast. So right now, um, things are, are, are moving as always, right? So things are happening. Okay. So uh, if you, you like to laugh, you know, you're going to enjoy this show too. Um, I like to kind of make fun of everything that's going on to some degree because it helps us realize how ridiculous some of the things that we say and share and what we're up to is. And then it brings a lightness to us to realize, oh God, it's just nothing to worry about. You know, everything's beautiful. So yeah, just like one of the first things is just to share that where we are is, um, you know, we are, are in the most transformational time in the history of humanity. Okay. And um, is that true? I don't know. I mean, in my lifetime, it sure seems like it absolutely is. I think I just like to debate some of these issues. I'm known as a debater believer. Uh, maybe you don't always have seen that on the show. Um, but Everybody says everything's so much bigger than every any other time, but is it true? Well, a lot of these things were like, yeah, it seems like the end of the world could happen. And the big changes are going happening in the world, so it seems true, right? So we say, oh, that's true. Um, there's no doubt about it, but is it really true? And in other words, are the changes that we've seen prior to this time any any less? So was what we're going through in the 70s less important? Depends on your perspective, right? Um, was what was going on thousands of years ago that we don't even know about maybe have been even more important to 
our civilization or mil even millions of years ago, if you listen to some people about the history of humanity, was what was going on then even more important. The possible that if you, you know, if you listen to some of my guests, you listen to some of the information, is it possible that, you know, we're, we were slaves, let's say, of the Anunnaki and they created us and, you know, uh, go back to Stephen Machette's episode and, and listen in uh, to, to that episode, the colonization of Earth. Could we have raised up? Is it, it's, it's war the always, you know, it's war the answer. Should, should we have found a way to rise above and, and not, not uh, allow them to put us in this bondage uh, code that we just talked about with Tara Maxwell recently? Um, what's the truth? So my point is I ask these questions not because I have an answer for you, but because I like to have people, what there's such a lack of um, often these days is people aren't questioning things quite enough um, in general, just generally speaking. A lot of times we just hear the information. I think it's getting a little bit better, you know, recently, but um, we're not questioning things enough. So we, and that might seem like, well, why would we want to question things all the time? But it helps because there are certain things that we just knee jerk react and accept as truths. Like, oh, it's the biggest change in humanity. I'm sure I'll probably say that, you know, again and again, because to me, there is a truth to it. I mean, um, but I do remember back in the eighties and even before that, I mean, you know, way before um, in the past, you know, back in the fifties, et cetera, this idea with nuclear weapons, the whole world could be wiped out, right? Now it doesn't, you know, in terms of our sense of bigness, it doesn't seem to get much bigger than that. So why is now all of a sudden a bigger time, right? I'm just asking questions. Why is it such a big time? If you uh, have comments where, where are, you want to share your answers with me, let, let me know. I mean, my sense of it is, is if you were to make the, um, you want to take a stand, if you want to take a stand on this and say it's more important, my guidance has said that, you know, possibly, you know, um, an incredible number of people could die, you know, over this, these next uh, 10 years. So this is getting into the, 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 the prophecy stuff. Now, again, we have to remember, again, from my perspective, and I think it's pretty, I mean, I guess somebody could debate me too, right? I welcome that. Um, but there are infinite timelines. People talk about timelines. There's infinite timelines. There's infinite realities. And they're all happening all at once. So literally anything could be unfolding, right? But whatever timeline I'm on, whatever path my soul's going down at the moment that I'm experiencing, I've been told from my guidance that Light leaders need to stand up and to do, to, to wake up and to do the work we've come here to do. And that it's so important. And it's so important because the opportunity for unconsciousness, um, the experience anyway of unconsciousness in a sense of um, what people would even call evil, you know, this is evil, this is horrible. Um, really has a chance to potentially take deeper root and it will take hold to a certain degree um potentially anyway so you know i mean the odds they told me are pretty strong that you know this is happening that there's going to be um big stuff coming now they didn't detail when this transmission came through they didn't detail how people would die how people are going to leave the planet um, this was pre-COVID. This is probably 2019-ish when I got this transmission. And they were, you know, showing me things to get, prepare me for what I'm to support with, right? So that would include doing things like this show, et cetera. So all the work that I'm doing, helping light leaders with their energy and their embodiment, getting um, themselves so that they can be fully themselves, deepen their purpose and do their bigger work in the world, expand their energy capacity so they can land clients. So that's why I talk about awakened sales, you know, making sales, and landing those at your next level. 
and getting your energy um, turned on for that intuitively strategizing what's working for you, getting the energy, um, the energy uh, reined in, so to speak. I, that's the word that comes to me right now. So everything aligns, feng shui your being so that your purpose rocks, that your money rocks, that your sales rock, that your impact rocks in the next level. And that's important because um, because we are in such you know big times. Um, it's always been important, but there's more of an opportunity. There is an energetic, you know, we have technology as a bridge. So that's one way we can interconnect and interface with each other and another, another way um, that's only just grown stronger, I feel, through the years, uh, through uh, the fact that we haven't been able to get uh, distracted by <laughs> things like going out and doing other things in the world during like a COVID, right? We can't do a live event, whatnot. So we're interconnecting. We're looking, how can I connect more and more with more and more people online, online? And so it's been perfect in that way. So the, the intimacy and the depth of connection is happening in more visible levels, more remote levels, as well as online levels. And I think there's an importance to that. There's um, another depth coming in. So when COVID hit, for example, so many light leaders that I know or light, light workers, light leaders were like celebrating, like, well, they're dancing a jig because like COVID's going on. I mean, that's how bizarre we are, right? That's how we roll. I mean, it's like, wow, this huge thing that we're told is killing, you know, countless people around the world and uh, creating illness, long-term health issues for people. Wow, light leaders and light workers are celebrating, saying this is the greatest thing that ever happened. Um, and why? So why would we say that when it seems like such a bad thing? People are losing jobs and more domestic violence. There's so many, you know, downsides. It would seem. How could it be such a great thing? Those discussions have been being had for a year now, right? Or, or about a year anniversary in, when things really in the states started locking down. With all this, uh, well, it's because we understood the deeper awakening was happening through this. So, regardless of what was happening for each individual soul, or you know, for for someone's business, or what the consequences was, we understood unconditionally that this was awakening, and that's all that mattered um, as far as uh, what really mattered. The other things, you know, matter a lot, but in comparison to this deeper awakening happening, those things really didn't matter that much to light workers, light leader type of people um, that I, you know, that I've been around. All right, so and so I talked to a lot of a lot of people. Um, so now we have the the chance, the opportunity. Uh, a year later, it's like year anniversary now. Um, as things are sort of opening up again, it turns out uh, us do getting back into things we do in person and businesses opening some and whatnot, at least here in the States, in some places not as much so, the vaccines and whatnot, which is a whole other subject we could get into, but um, a lot of ideas around that. So how, how are we doing, you know, a year later? Is there a deeper stability, a strength, a deepening of the awakening? I think it's really shaken people up on top of the uh, uh, election and what happened here in the US. It's many things around the world, of course, there's um, many other things happening that we're seeing that, uh, what are we seeing what we're experiencing maybe more and seeing we're, we're feeling that awakened response deepening inside each of us and though we still have our emotions we still have our day-to-day -day stuff that we deal with at some levels right there's still there's something opening right and if that's not happening for you let me know but i i i'm willing to bet that you know 
80 or 90 percent of you would say, oh, absolutely. I have experienced that over the last year or maybe more. But um, I know that so many of us experiencing this. So it kind of goes beyond, you know, again, the wake response goes beyond words. It goes beyond uh, concepts. And we just feel it. And why does this matter? Why are we, why are we even talking about it? Um, this awakened response uh, is very important. We had, um, spiritually, energetically speaking, uh, as I scan the energy, and, and I'm going to get into the scanning and prophecy piece here as in a moment, pretty soon here. But as we look at what the shift we're experiencing just here in the States, because I'm in the States, okay, so in the, the world is pays a lot of attention is connected to the energy of the States is a, a lot for the most part. Um, we went through uh, the election stuff, okay, and COVID. Those are, and then the racial stuff last year too. There was like three really intense things happening last year. Some, there's some overlay within it all as well. Three really intense things. Um, but if we look at it, you know, the COVID, the deep and awakened response. Um, now, if you think it's, you know, not real or fake or this or that, um, you know, I've, no, I've, I've known people that have died from what was tested as COVID-19 and they had the symptoms with the, the problems with breathing and whatnot. And uh, uh, so I, you know, I feel that, um, that there is uh, definitely with these world events that are happening, there is a, a, a organized plan. I do believe that, okay. I do believe there's a very organized plan that is creating these situations. So when we start with the three events like last year, let's say, for example, and then we'll get into scanning and prophecy and stuff from there. We'll take these real quickly, um, not too long here, but just on the COVID, uh, what's the absolute truth? Well, every person that can tune in is probably going to give you similar and different answers, right? So some people, some of my guests, like Steve, again, Stephen Mischek came out for another show about the, my friend Stephen Mischek came out with a show talking about, um, about this and how he believes it's come up from the ground and the earth and it's the earth's response to us, the way we've been behaving, right? And there's, uh, so that would be like, well, it's the earth that's creating it one way or another because if it came from a bat and then it got into a market and then it got to humans and what all right so but it came from the earth you know let, let's face it, came from the earth thing so okay came from the earth all right so we could go with that um we could say uh you know look at the other theories right it came i'm getting somewhere with all this just follow follow me here all right so and it says it's a spiritual thing so then we get the ideas of it was cooked up in a lab. Okay, that's another one. It changes our DNA and RNA and all this stuff. It's part of some kind of plan, whether it's the global elites, the Chinese, or all of them together. The Chinese meaning the China, China, uh, not Chinese, but the China government. Um, I'm be careful about how I'm saying that. I apologize for that, but like like the China government, they, that idea, right? What is that idea? Um, what other ideas do we have about it? Uh, we have the idea that it just simply did come from a bad, it's had to do with the earth, the, the wet markets are the problem, and that's where it came from. Got that, it was released, it was engineered in the lab. Um, um, so, did it come from a bat and then they're playing around with it in the lab then it accidentally got released and was it a planned release to get manufactured another way uh people are investigating people that seem credible right they they put the the virus under a microscope and they can show you like you know from their perspective and what they're looking at say look this is this changes dna this is not like a ordinary virus this has been told i'm even people won Nobel Peace Prizes and whatnot in science, you know, uh, you 
know, I have to look up the, again, the specifics of who said it, but I know like people have been recognized at a, at a, at a high level anyway. Um, so yeah, there's no doubt about it to me. This is definitely been deliberately released and uh, deliberately uh, created to do what it's doing in, in no uncertain terms. They're completely convinced. Uh, there are the people that say uh, they're so-called experts. They're all so-called experts to me because I don't know. Uh, what do I know as far as like that stuff goes? I'll get to the deeper stuff in a minute. But the fact of the matter is there's all these opinions. There's all this sense of credibility from different people. The mind looks at all these things and looks for what it, it considers most resonant to what its beliefs are and seems like to them the most trusted authority to them for whatever the reason, usually based on just your own programming. And then you just say, that's the answer. That's what's been going on there. Yeah, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Now I know what happened. You know, for very, very rare exceptions, even within the light leader, you know, crowd, very few people can say with absolute certainty that they really do know what's going on. And the people that say they do mostly are just saying it, you know, and they don't know. If you really press them, they'll say, well, it's possible I'm wrong, but I believe this is true because I have to say is, well, can you absolutely know it's true? And most everybody's going to drop out then. Yeah. So we don't really know what created it. But here's where I get back to what I've been saying. People look at like these councils, the World Economic Forum councils and whatnot, and we hear what they're telling us, what they're working on, what they're doing, right? They were, you know, getting ready for such a such a thing for years, for years. So did they deliberately plan it? Am I here to tell you I know for a hundred percent? No, but they were talking about such things. They were saying it's coming. They were telling us they're just so smart, or was it part of a plan? But you come to your own conclusion. Is it part of a plan or did it just happen to work out that boy they're really smart and it just didn't just wow it just happened so just a coincidence that it happened the year of an election in which the current president of the united states was inflicting great amount of economic um, suppression upon the chinese government the chinese people then i guess ultimately the country is that just coincidence? I mean, it could be. You come to your own conclusion. Could it be that, you know, is it just coincidence that, that led to changing the way we vote? Lots of mail-in ballots and whatnot. Is that just coincidence? I mean, it, all these people are talking about this thing's coming. It's coincidence that, you know, the president, current president put all this suppression on like the second most, you know, so-called powerful nation in the world. And then it comes from there, you know, this, this uh, come, you know, emanates from just, it's all coincidence, right? I mean, it's nothing. And then, and then it, the election gets shifted in such a way that um, the way we vote completely changes. I mean, the way we can vote completely changes. Ballots go out in ways that They've never gone out before. People say, well, there's always was mail-in ballots. Yeah, the ballots weren't flying out the door at the anywhere remotely. Like ballots are going out all over the place. Is that a secure election? I'm not going to answer the question. I'm going to have you uh, contemplate that. So, so it is interesting to just sit back and look at all that and wonder. And even for independent eyes, if you never heard anybody's conspiracy theories, is to look at someone like a Senator Biden working with, you know, working with deals and whatnot that were, you know, ended up being favorable for his son, you know. Um, I don't think you can deny that. Just if you even get out of your opinion pieces, it doesn't matter if, you know, and 
and he's a presidential candidate and then he somehow becomes a president. I mean, no, it's just coincidence. There's no connection there whatsoever. Um, maybe it is coincidence. What do I know? They are, look, I'm just a, you know, my hair's spraying out there. I'm just a goofy guy. What do I know? What do I know? I'm just a white guy. You know, what do I know? So, um, and the list could go on and on. Okay, you got the point. Now, I'm going to get it, finally get it. I thought it was going to be brief. It's going a little longer than I thought. But the fact of the matter is, is that it, in some ways, it, it, it does matter and it, it, it ultimately doesn't matter how it happened and why it happened, all right? That's not the most important thing. What's happening is in terms of what, how we're responding and the awakened response is what matters to each and every one of these scenarios. Was it just a coincidence that although there's violence, um, I'll just say it that way, violence happening to uh, black people from uh, the police and systemic racism and all these things, they just happen overnight. Like the awareness of them just skyrocketed overnight like there was never a George Floyd before like that never happened before I mean that was the first time like that never happened before never had one of those before we all know that's you know not true I think I mean oh, I don't know what do I know maybe that's not true too and it happens during election year etc so and it gets blown blown into a big 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 movement that you know does bring incredible new awareness to these things. This coincidence, just this these coincidences to help us wake up to what? And I'm getting leading into that. So I'll just cover that one briefly just by saying that. And then there was, you know, the next thing and the next thing and the next thing with all that. Statues being pulled down, blah, 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 blah. Right. All the things if we could relive it all. And then we get into election season. Uh, ballot counting stops in certain states in the middle of the night never happened, you know, uh, reportedly, you know, what do I know again, but reportedly has never happened before. And um, statistical things happen that never, seem almost impossible with the vote counts. But there's no evidence of wide fraud, uh, widespread fraud, there's no problem, so not any issues there's nothing to look at here nothing particularly of interest no it's just a regular election there's nothing different it's absolutely fine it's absolutely fine so um and after all you know we got now that trump's gone we all feel lighter right so we all feel lighter we all feel I mean, I think that's mostly true. I think people feel better. Even people, many people, some people even that are supporting Trump. I think people are, even them, even the ones actually that are diehard, I think some of them may actually feel relieved, right? Just to be done with the sense of conflict of the battle, you know, of what's going on. It's like a big release, right? When Biden got elected. And it felt like, your heart chakra opened. It felt like I'm. I felt like heaven on earth is coming coming into fruition. And we could look at details of what Biden's been doing. We could say, "My God, I love that man. He's doing an incredible job. Look at all the incredible things he's signing into legislation, legisl not legislation, but through executive order." Um, yeah. And then we could look at. We could look at what else? I mean. Or we could say it's a worse thing, right? So it's kind of like polarized, like pretty much the two up two, two opinions, or it's in between, or whatever. But overall, people feel light. The heart chakra is opening. So after we go through all the details, now does let me ask you a question. You answer your own this question for yourself. I'm just asking the questions because again, I told you I'm here to, to ask questions, and then I'm going to share you know perspectives from there. Um, So if you get after, after gave just like how many minutes, like, you know, whatever minute mark we're at now, all of these details went through everything. And you probably, I know what he's thinking, you know, right? That's fine. Okay. That's, maybe you do. Um, 
but it's about what you what, what I'm really getting at ultimately is what underneath all the storylines and the idea that America's ending or America's finally, you know, coming back into its glory or whatever different narratives are. Again, like so many narratives, that, you know, the, the, this world, these elites are going to take us over and it's going to be a totalitarian state like throughout the world and it's going to be horrible. After we get past all the stories, all the stories, if you just close your eyes for a moment, You feel into the energy, not information, because that will get your mind engaged. You just feel into the energy of the way the energy felt. Just breathe now. Feel into the energy of the collective, the energy on the planet. Feel where it was in the beginning of 2020. Whatever you're feeling or sensing, you know, intuiting is perfect. Like it's perfect for you. It's what you're meant to be aware of. Feel into that, like what that felt like, how you felt, how the world felt. Pause the pause this uh, podcast if you want to. Okay, and then you feel into that, and then you feel into, and you 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 scan into yourself or tune into yourself when COVID started becoming something, and then the the sense of shutdown, how you felt at the time. Okay. And as time went on, then we have Black Lives Matter um, protests, you know, uh, all the, the rioting, looting, people being, you know, uh, uh, the, you know, situations where we've got Black men being uh, uh, killed, et cetera, you know, all the scenario, whatever it is, whatever comes up for you, but you all the things that happen, I already kind of touched on all that. So you feel into that, the sense of injustice, let's do something about it. We feel in deeper underneath the current. We got COVID comes in. How did you feel then? That black, we'll just call it Black Lives Matter. So Black, uh, Black Lives Matter. Just call it death. Yeah, just go with it. Okay. Regardless of your opinions of that, positive or negative, just feel into the energy of that. Then we come around election time, fall. So it's hidden. We told election starts ramping out stronger into the election, the election happens, we feel that, the capital situation happens, uh, January 6th, and that, and then, oh, Biden gets elected, oh, and then where we are today, when you're listening to this broadcast. I feel what the frequency feels like now in March of 2021, then feel back to the frequency for a moment, how it felt back in January or just before COVID, it's anywhere we just feel into that and then versus now. And it's a subtle thing maybe for you or it might be strong. Do you feel like that deeper awakening is happening within you? First of all, do you feel it in you? Whatever answer you get, it's fine. And then I'll share what I'm getting, I'll scan you guys in a moment. And then feel into, let's feel into now um, how the collective is feeling, you know, just overall frequency. Let's just say that there's only one, there's just one, right, ultimately. So on average, you know, the fullness of the one collective consciousness here of humanity, how did it feel, you know, early 2020? Feel into that. And how does it feel right now? Okay, all right. Now, whatever you got is what you got. Now, what I got is I turn tune into, well, there's the personal, so that, but if I tune into the, the group energy here, it feels like, oh, life as usual before uh, pre-COVID, right? So, um, you yeah. know, my audience, most of you guys are like, Trump sucks, you know, not all of you, but um, over half of you for sure, 70% maybe or more maybe 70%, um, maybe that's a thought. Hopefully it'll get better, you know, all that kind of stuff. Hopefully get impeached or get taken out or uh, 
office or whatever. Okay, so we got those feelings because that came to dominate our focus and energy a lot. While well, he was in office, and then okay, all right, and then you feel it now, and I feel into the frequency now. It's like again, I feel more of an opening in the heart, more of a sense of what's possible. There's, but there's also a sense of. I do have a sense in the collective here of the energy that I am excited. I'm ready to share my heart with the world more and my voice. They're also scared. I'm also scared. I'm still scared. I feel like um, I can get my behind handed to me at any time, you know? So I feel that as well. But overall, collective, it feels pretty similar. I mean, it's like business as usual beforehand. It's like business as usual. Then like around right now, it's like, oh, I want to believe that this is such a great thing that's unfolding. Like, I hope it's a great thing. But I'm not sure. I'm, 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 I'm concerned. I'm concerned for our world. I'm concerned for our country. I think maybe some greater things are happening, uh, hopefully, but we could be going to hell in a handbasket. So, still, so, because so, that's the unfortunate people feel that way too. So, it's kind of where we are now. What I'm picking up from the audience right now is in terms of where you are with your, with everything as. I'll get into that in a moment. So my point is, let me get back to my sort of my point. The point is, is when we tune into the frequency of what's unfolding, what's wanting to come in right now ultimately is what all that really matters. But what's been trying to come in, what's trying to come in therefore right now from the vertical life that's flowing into us, that is what's the thing we want to pay the most attention to. The outer world is, again, we always have to remember, no matter what, how dramatic it is, no matter what it looks like, it's a mirror. It's a mirror of energy. It's something that's going on for us. I mean, think about, again, that, that guy that you don't even want me to say his name sometimes. So you, Trump, if you're Trump, what do you get? Anger, and your anger is engaged. What do you think is going on for Trump that in that same exact spot that you're feeling that feeling right now? You're feeling anger, what do you think he feels? You think it's a match? Probably. He's angry. You're angry. So you're just you're just resonating with this that same frequency. Now that he's out of the picture, now you're like, oh good, I don't have to deal with that for now. So it feels good. It feels light now. We don't have to deal with that anger. Even for people that believed in him, it's a little lighter right now because we're not dealing with that anger quite as directly as we were before. Not for most of you. Now, some of you might be exceptions. Always could be an exception. Tune into your energies and tune into what I feel this group of light leaders tuning in is, is what do, what's next for us? What is wanting to happen? We've got we've got the higher guidance, we've got the galactic energies, you know, we've got these things that want to come in. For um, some of us, we just talked with, with Tara again. I keep thinking about Tara, which I just interviewed her. Tara Maxwell, talking about the Arcturian uh, Council. We just talked about that briefly. Uh, people, you know, you're meant to be the Palladians. And, you know, we didn't talk about that on that show, but like, we got the Palladians and the, all the rest, you know, all the different uh, ones, all the different aspects of the star seed energies. And so you can feel that. And more of that is waking up inside of you. What does that mean? What is, who cares? What's it matter? Well, what it feels like is there's more of a strength, more of an embodied power that's coming in. 
that it's coming in through you and it's coming in through your heart and it wants to digest though in your power center and below. What I feel, you know, my read on it for Trump was, yeah, and it doesn't matter my, my opinion in my mind, you know, I've got a mind like everybody else. So my mind may have opinions about for and against people. If I was for and against somebody, right? So the part of me that judges has its judgments and its thoughts. If I get past that and just look at the frequency, like, okay, that was an opportunity to deal with this suppressed rage and anger that lies within humanity for justice, for justice. Because Trump, okay, I'm telling you, an energetic read, doesn't matter your opinion of him. He is angry and he is for justice, his own justice, whether you believe in his justice or not whatever your concepts are about this justice doesn't matter i'm telling you the energetic read is angry and righteous for justice for what he feels is true and right in such cases it could be you know i believe we all i should be making more money you know or whatever it could be anything right like i'm just saying like there's that sense of this is meant to happen it's justice otherwise it's just not right you're getting in contact with that where you were sleepy to that as a collective before this, especially most of you light leaders. Now you might've had your social justice stuff going up strong, but it got stronger once Trump came, or came along for some of you. So, so all this is awakening us to the sense of our anger and a sense of this feeling at first of like a sense of righteous anger. But what it wants to do is attack. It wants to destroy things. It wants it at any cost and give it to me now. And otherwise just shut up or I will destroy you. I was told this, you know, years ago that we were upon the age of the destroyer. And it were directly referencing the time of Trump, this sense of destroying this, 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 this old energy of of identities, fighting for identities is part of it. And so we had to, we had needed to really get in contact with those old primitive energies so that we could really experience them and let them come through and see them and then be like, wow, I'm saying I hate people. I'm a light leader. Wow. It's like a mirror. Part of you keeps saying, I, I, he still wants to say, I don't like it. I hate it. I'm right here. And you've been working through it. You're working through it. It's a work in progress, right? But these galactic energies, these, these higher frequencies, uh, galactic is part of it. And then all the rest, all your light team is coming through. It's here to say, hey, there are practical, enlightened ways to deal with everything on the planet. And let's start at zero. Let's start at zero. Let's start from a place of the zero point within your being. And yes, as the anger and emotions come up, let's let's evaluate those things. Let's let those things be seen for what they are, and that we can step into um, the deeper presence within, so that more of your infinite light can be received and shared and circulated on the planet here on Earth for humanity, for everything, and for the, for the planet. And we're meant to do it from a sense of togetherness, increasingly from a sense of, this is just where we're all resonating at. Now there's always holder outers, you know, people that are like, wait a minute, what about this? That's like that collective inner critic or the doubting voice will be in the collective with any issue ultimately. So it doesn't matter what it is, but the awakened response increasingly is gaining the hold but this age of the destroyer, as I just, it was described to me, and I can, I can feel it, at times we'll try to make a 
tremendous comeback. It'll happen in your individual life, but it'll also will happen in the collective. And this is where we've seen it historically, um, and, and hopefully not this time. I know that it, it's not a, not an absolute that this has to happen, but you know people have been wiped out. You know, I mean, uh, ethnic cleansing, etc. You know, people killed, just just massacred. That's what this anger can do. It can destroy and it can massacre and it lives inside of you. Almost every single one of you listening has some of it. And it's okay. You've got to make peace with that it's there. You've been bred for love. You've come from love. It's more like you've come from love than bred for love. You've been bred for love and that you've come from love. But you've been shown something else that wants to fight for love. It will kill for love. And right now, you have to decide if you want to let this be what continues or not. It doesn't need to continue. It may show up and blow blips. They just re oh, wow, that, yeah, I remember that energy. Interesting, yeah. Well, not, I'm not like that anymore. We're not like that anymore. It's not how we roll anymore. True awakened space is waking up inside of you, within your heart. God, you know, all these guides, all these beings with me are, are encouraging you to, to ground and land. Archangel Michael coming through, through into your energy, through your root chakra, down to the core of the earth. When you feel that strength, that decisive strength coming in your energy, you know, divine justice is already here. already here and when you live from that frequency and you trust the divine order is is taking place increasingly you'll experience it you'll experience it in your life you just start to realize the infinite has got everything held perfectly far better than what our little minds can try to whip up right it only leads back to more suffering death and despair and illness doesn't matter who created it we all did i promise you that we we all created it who created what you name it we all created it we all created it you could say that you created it you could say that too and then everybody else is experiencing similar, same things, similar, same or similar things. Or to say they created it, you'd all be right. If you say I created it or we created it, you're both right. You're all right. People continue to look for blame. Who are we to blame for all of this? Even though you light leaders, <sighs> who are we to blame? Who's the bad guy? There's always a bad guy, right? That's how our mind has been trained. There's a bad guy, there's a good guy. Who's the good guy, who's the bad guy? Can we see through the eyes of love and see beyond that? Can we see the, the, the oneness with source or term I like to use is the Christ, meaning just can you see the God in all? Can you see the God in all? Including a Biden or a Donald Trump? That's your mission. It's part of the awakening. Can you see the God in all? Even if it's this tiny speck of it, you see it in one molecule, one fiber, one atom of uh, Joe Biden or Donald Trump, for example. 
wherever your your rage or unhappiness has been in the outward world, any any condition, money, fi you know, finances, health, relationships, find one little speck. What are you grateful for, for, for this man, this woman, this situation, whatever it is? What are you grateful for? Where's that speck of the divine? I am so grateful for Donald Trump because I'm so grateful for Joe Biden because fill in the blank. If you need to do it every day for the next 30 days so that you're no, no longer triggered, then that's what you need to be doing right now. Whatever's been triggering you constantly, consistent, even things that you think are good things to be err about, give thanks for that which you find to be unjust and find the good in it because there's something always you can find in it. Bring this into your practices. Master Jesus says, everything, all the answers are found in your heart. Come back into the deep waters, brothers and sisters. Let's bathe in these waters. You're ready for them. You're ready for them. They are ready for us. A higher guidance. The divine reconciliation with you, your soul, and the planet. Thank you, God, and so it is. Okay, all right. Oh, all right. So where where, where have you been listening? I just uh, I'm grateful to to share some things with you today. I could do a very long, you know, uh, podcasts here. Uh, committed to keeping this, uh, you know, on, you know, to around an hour at the most, an hour mark, you know, somewhere in the hour mark at the most each one. So I hope that this was awakening for you. It was awakened you to something. The part of your mind that'll go back and like, oh, wow, you, you know, like even most of it you've thought of already, but like, wow, that was a good thought he had about this or that, like, just use as a point of awakening. Don't let your mind go too crazy with it. Like, just let it help you realize it doesn't even matter. You know, it, it ultimately doesn't really matter what happened, how it happened. There's something deeper that's wanting to happen. There is a divine plan unfolding. That is what does trump all, so to speak. I, I don't know what else word to use right now. <laughs> okay. That is what is overriding everything else. That is the thing that is beyond all of it. That is always happening. Whether people think that, that is true or not, it is just one of those isnesses. For wherever God is, God, you know, cannot, God is everywhere, source is everywhere. So God is working through all of it, whether it seems like it's good or bad. God is working within it all. It's there within it all. God is working within it all. As we continue to awaken during this time, which I do feel are the most important times ever because we have a chance to raise in frequency. And that will happen. We're going to raise in frequency as a collective. But there will also be people, as I've been told so many times, that may devolve in greater darkness during such times and may leave the planet one way or the other. Um, as attackers or as um, people being attacked, they may perish, they may leave the planet. So we want to, you know, be in the prayer sphere, deepen in that for ourselves and the collective and let the love, the sense of love and commitment to the love in our hearts to serve the world. Therefore, really to serve our own awakening, but to serve the world, serve humanity. Um, regardless of our concepts of different people and circumstances to simply serve that which we've come here to serve with an awakened heart and open mind, never buying in um, to any one perspective, to lock into anything um, mentally. We can have it there. It could be like, no, I'm locked in here, but that you are so awake and opened that you're not really locked in 
you're aware that it's just an opinion, it's just a concept you have. You're not sure if it's true or not. The more you realize that, the more the heaviness of it releases, the more you're in a constant state of wonder and awe, realizing that your mind that keeps giving you these ideas doesn't know anything, no matter how many scientific studies are done. From a sense of the mind, it really doesn't know anything. Um, but that the awakened presence knows something deeply. I want you to listen from that space. Let the mind fill in the, the blanks and details we need to navigate this physical realm, which it's a lot less needed than we realize. And yet it's amazing and beautiful. The mind is so beautiful. It's so amazing. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. Okay, great. All right, everybody. Well, that's my show here for this show. So I'm grateful for you. If you want to check me out more, if you're not already with, uh, you know, aware of what I do, go to yoursacredpurpose.com. Get your free gift if you haven't got it, by the way, meditate and make money and receive your, your opening of your chakras and energy and the attunement that will help you to attune energetically more than anything. Get some answers, you know, on your path for rocking out your sacred purpose in your business as a light leader and see the money start flowing in at the next level. As long as you practice with it, um, that's what we're seeing for people. Uh, and uh, other opportunities like energy scanning are available there. All right. Okay, great. Well, I'm so grateful for all of you. Thanks for li listening in. Keep on tuning in. We'll keep on rocking it here at Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Bye. You're listening to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Stay tuned for our next upcoming new episodes each Wednesday and Saturday. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review to help us to serve you best. As a reminder, you can get your free Meditate and Make Money meditation at www.yoursacredpurpose.com to rock your sacred purpose. Goodbye for now, everybody.